October 22, 2024. This is the S&P 500 E Futures Mini on the 2000 tick chart using NinjaTrader 8. This is what the chart looked like today. As you can see, there's kind of this big sell off in the pre market, pretty much a sideways consolidation, then a very gradual rally, kind of a correction, another sideways consolidation here, then a big rally, and then two legs down. So it's hard to say it was in a trading range, and it definitely wasn't trendy. So this is how I drew up the charts today. Drew here found this a break and a kind of a gradual move up on this yellow up channel. But this yellow up channel is hard to trust because there's not clean confirmations. So I was playing these short and trend channels. Consolidation here. This big move up that I unfortunately wasn't able to find a good setup on. Kind of a two legs down and then this yellow leg up. Break, test of the high, and then push and sell off in the for the end. But this is like the last 10 minutes. So I don't really want to trade anything here because price action at this zone, right around the last 30 minutes, the last 10 minutes, it's not that it's, uh, I would say it's kind of not, it's not as reliable because toward the last 10 minutes for sure, there's a lot of traders taking profits, they're rolling over contracts, they're setting up their positions, they're hedging, they're just doing a lot of stuff. So the two-legged pullbacks aren't as clean and it has a tendency to have a rush of orders that might you know, really, really kind of muddle the setup. So usually I don't like to trade the last 10 minutes. And uh, especially if you're already up for the day or you didn't take a trade, you don't want to try to risk a Hail Mary type of thing back here. I took a total of one trade and it was profitable, which is nice. And there was a couple, I think one or two other setups that I thought were decent, but I didn't take them because probably the signal bar or the risk was rather high. There was no economic data that came out today to really move the market in any which way. I would say it was another, you know, kind of a slow day, but there there was, I mean, I think it was a little easier to read today, but with that being said, it wasn't as if there was just setups left and right. So I'm going to go into the trades right now. So, But carrying forward from yesterday's close, the pre-market looks like there's these pretty big two legs down, but this is uh, over a really long several hours, so I'm not really creating any of this. So when I come in, this is what I see. I saw this potential big leg down, a bunch of corrections up, break above the EMA. EMA was holding prices down, flushed down on this red or this orange down channel. Break and test the low, which has succeeded. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then it's push up on the screen channel, break, test the high. First attempt, it already made it, but it came back and made a second attempt. So it created a second entry short. I thought this is a possible trade because it's a new low. First entry short, second entry short. I like this. The signal bar is this green one here. It's not a good signal bar, but now keep in mind, I didn't have this line drawn yet, but I did see that it moved up one tick and then flushed down close below the EMA. Granted, the EMA is a little flat right now, but it did engulf this whole candle here and close really strongly low so i really like this except it was a 4.20 tick bar so i liked that there was a strong push down i anticipated another at least enough for a scalp but i just didn't like the risk side of taking this trade because the stop would have to be one tick above here it just felt a little dicey turns out it would have worked because you would have been able to scoop through here the other thing going against it is these three bars maybe three and a half bars are in the first minute of the day. And as I said, during the first minute, a lot of stuff is happening because there's a lot of trades that people have set up that will execute on the market open on certain conditions because not as many people trade the pre-market. So traders that are waiting for this to open likely have set up, you know, trades or are coming from an overnight hold or something and they have their orders ready right when the market opens or they're waiting for specific conditions right at the market open. So unless this is a much, much better setup, I wasn't going to take it. Right, so then continue moving. Here creates a second entry short. <clears throat> Here's a new low. It's a first entry short, just barely by one tick. Pushes up, creates a second entry short. This second entry short, it's a bad signal bar, but I did like it did the same thing. It moved up. One tick, flush down, close, strongly engulf this entire signal bar, just like this one. So although it's a bad signal bar, now I did draw, actually this was a little sharper previously, 
looks something like closer to this, where it actually had three touches, one touch, two touch, three touch. So this was adjusted later, but I did see it as a third touch confirmation break and push back down. So I thought this is a potential trade. And there's enough EMA, excuse me, enough room from here down to any localized low. Although it is making higher lows every time, I thought there was enough room here for a scalp. So it would have pushed down, <clears throat> would have uh, gotten a quick scalp, and then reverses back up. I also want to show that um, technically, I guess there was a first entry long here, push up. I think you could consider this as a hidden second entry long, like first entry long, pull back, second entry long. But I consider it actually, let me take that back. I don't want to misread it. So I think it was actually just more a clean second entry short. The prices continue moving. It starts moving up on what I think is this green up channel. It fits pretty nicely on the bottom. Also fits pretty nicely at the top. So it, this is something I think I could work with. Drops around technically. So depending on where you did it, it's like first entry short, second entry short, count resets, new swing low, first entry short, second entry short. You could consider this a new swing low, first entry short, second entry short. By the time I'm doing a bunch of second entry short recounts, I'm just waiting. I decide like, okay, you know, it's clearly pushing up and down, pushing up and down. Trending higher, trending higher to go short just feels dicey, but you do have second entry shorts setting up. But it's just not high probability second entry shorts. So I waited. So it's a new high, it's a first entry long pullback. This creates a second entry long. Now, just like these guys, I like that this, so the signal bar, just like these guys, there's a bullish signal bar when trying to go short, bullish signal bar when trying to go short, bearish signal bar when I'm trying to go long. So it's kind of like a reverse of these two setups, but for this one, I thought, okay, there's a possible trade. I think I'm going to take it. It's a first entry long pullback, second entry long, break of the screen up channel, move one tick below, trapped a bunch of people going short, flushed up, closed the high. So I decided I want to take this trade. When this opened, it opened here. I actually had my entry right at the highs of this one. So I put my entry here, hoping it'd come back, pick me up. It opened here, it started moving up. I admit I did get a little FOMO, so I actually dragged it up to here the high of this candle, and it's still bouncing around. I felt like I was going to miss the trade. So I actually dragged it up to here, and I got a little bit of slippage. So you can see I actually entered. So if it's one tick above here, it'd be 68.70, but I actually entered a 68.70.25. So it's actually two ticks above here. So one tick above where I should have, and I got a little bit of slippage. So I actually entered three ticks higher than I wanted. But I was able to get to one point scout up here. I moved my uh, stop from break even to my entry plus one tick, and it got stopped out here. Good thing though, because it looked like you know it certainly could have moved higher, but then it flushed down. Here, if I kept my stop here and I was going for like more than just two points, I would have survived. I did sit through this noise, and maybe about here I would have gotten out, but I'm not going for that much of a big move. I'm just going for a quick scalp, so this just worked perfectly for me. Just in and out of the trade as fast as possible. <clears throat> Prices move up, kind of moves up on this orange up channel, break of this yellow up channel. But again, this yellow up channel really doesn't have that many confirmations. So this could be a fail breakout or actually could be slightly higher. I didn't like dragging it up to here because then it just leaves too much space up here. So I actually just kept it down here and just treated it as a fail breakout. One attempt up and it creates a second attempt up. So it's first entry long pullback, second entry long. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then it kind of creates a higher low right here. I thought this higher low was a possible trade. So it's a break. First entry long pullback, second entry long, higher low confirmed. The thing that was giving me a little hesitation is it confirms the second entry long. Uh, it confirms the second entry long setup, but it has a failed breakout. So if there's a failed breakout, I'm wondering if it's going to push all the way back down to here. But since it already made one attempt up, pull back, it made the second attempt up. This looks like a possible third attempt. And I saw it as a pretty clean higher low. So I thought there's a good chance that it has at least enough for a scalp. I didn't want to take the trade, but I thought if I did, I'd put it right at the highs of this red candle, which would also be right at the close of this candle. So here, it looks like it would have gotten filled and it would have worked, but it just didn't feel quite safe enough as a setup for me. But it was, I think, a possible trade. Prices moved down. Okay, so now it comes back to the bottom side. So I'm trusting this yellow up channel a little bit more. One touch, two touch, three touch. Uh, it's debatable with this fourth touch, but I'll group this together to be conservatives. One, two, three, four touches, and it's pushing back up. 
<clears throat> it's one touch, two touch, a fail breakout here. Maybe it's actually a little higher, but it is pushing to the high side, pushing back down to the low side. I'm looking for a reason to go long because it's going with trend. So it's a new high, first entry long, pull back. Here, it looks like it's about to create a second entry long. <clears throat> What's giving me pause is that it is below the EMA. It's a break of this orange down channel, made one attempt down, which could make a second attempt down. So I'm thinking I, there might be a chance to go long here. It flushes up and then comes back down. So it created a new high, first entry long pullback, second entry long failure. Also new low, first entry short pullback, second entry short, confirmed second entry short. What I didn't like about it, and that's why I called it an almost trade, is if this yellow up channel is true, then I'm running out of room to for a clean scalp. I'm not so much worried. I'm not so much looking at my possibility to make it down here. I'm looking at the possibility of a potential bounce on this yellow support up channel. So that kind of makes me <clears throat> feel a little uh, less enthusiastic about trying to take this trade. So it kind of pushes through. So even though it's a first entry short, second entry short, confirm second entry short, if you took a short, and you say you put it one here, you would have gotten filled. You'd have to sit through this diciness. And likely, depending on how much you're scalping out, you would have gotten your quick scalp. You'd have to sit through this. If you kept your stop where you're supposed to, which is one tick above here, you would have skirt by and not gotten taken out here. And likely down here would have gotten your one or two point scalp. If you try to go for anything more, it would have stopped you out because one of these guys would have definitely taken out your stop. All right, so then continue moving up, then up channel. First entry short, pull back, second entry short, decent second entry short, signal bar, break of this orange up channel, test of the new high, first entry short, second entry short. I didn't feel um, super confident yet, but I think this is potentially a trade here. Actually, I'll just go ahead and mark it. Possible trade, <clears throat> because you do have enough room to just scalp out, and it looked like it would have worked for one point scalp. If you went for anything more than say two points, looks like this would have reversed on you and taken you out. The price to continue moving, it's a first entry long. Technically I have a second entry long here. I saw this, I didn't like it because it's had a double top here. So even though you have a decent signal bar here, signal bar is a low risk five tick bar. You have enough room to scalp out. I just didn't really like the setup here because I was thinking maybe at least the next candle might come down, touch the EMA, it makes me feel a little bit better than reverse up, but never happens. So. And there's no trade there. You do have a new low, first entry short, second entry short, bad signal bar to go short, plus you're gonna go into the EMA. And if you took a short, you'd be pretty nervous because it hit a triple bottom right here. Looked like it would have worked. Bounces around, hits this kind of this consolidation area, kind of a trading range, but I don't really trust it too much. It does have one touch, two touch, three touch, potential triple test. Top isn't super confirmed yet. But even if you have a triple test here, there, it, these, these bars aren't very reliable. You could say you're gonna jump in on this candle because the EMA isn't as important right now. You could be looking for another test of this yellow up channel high, but I just didn't feel, it is nice that it moved one tick down and reversed all the way up. So I'll mark it as a triple test, but nothing <clears throat> I feel all super passionate about, but it, it, has, a, it has a pretty strong close. And you know, in hindsight, we see what happens, but if I was deciding to take a trade, I don't like the size of the signal bar. I would have put it to reduce the risk, probably put it at the highs of this candle or to be even more conservative, the highs of this candle. Because this candle here is a three point candle, <clears throat> excuse me, 12 tick bar. So even if I did that, I wouldn't have gotten filled. So I was okay just not doing anything here. Pushes up and out, makes it back into this yellow, Trend channel, but this yellow trend channel is starting to break down. It doesn't feel as clean as it did back here because it looks like it's just kind of getting not really holding support anymore and moving sideways. <clears throat> so that makes a new high, first entry long. And from here, moving on up, this big move up, you don't really get any setups. You do have like second entry shorts, but it's hard to trust, at least with my experience level. I mean, I clearly knew that, okay, I'm in a trend now, it's fitting nicely in this green up channel. But I was still trying to be very disciplined and look for the correct second entry. <clears throat> and even at this point, a clean second entry bouncing off the support, I think I would have taken it because I'm not as worried about the EMA now, but nothing quite set up that, that clean. 
that pushes up breaks out. It creates a, it breaks out, comes down on this orange down channel. You have a first entry long here, push back. You have a second entry long here. It's below the EMA. It's not the best signal bar. Better leave it alone. Then it kind of consolidates and price action slows down here. And these candles are really small. So there's no clean second entries that I trust when I see stuff like this. When I see stuff like this, where they're just pretty much side by side and they are trending, but just ever so slightly than the previous, I feel like when I see this in real time as it's unfolding, you feel like any kind of news blurp or something could cause it to create one of these big candles that you don't anticipate and probably hit your stop or stop you out or something. So I'm just very cautious when I see something like this. And then by the time you get to here, you have a failed breakout. It's not really holding in this trend anymore. And the failed, not the failed breakout, but you have a breakout. It's looks like it's moving back into range. But even then, these candles are, aren't printing the fastest because this is like, from here to here is like a two minute candle from here to here is a three minute candle another it's just like really slow price action so it's hard to trust plus the volume for today wasn't that high in the first place this is the entire day of trading so far with about an hour left so it's just hard to hard for me to trust even though it's kind of trending nicely the new low it's a first entry short you technically have a second entry short here but it's not a clean setup it's a bad signal bar which is up now it's entering the last 30 minutes of the day. You only have a first entry long break of this yellow up channel, test the high. So you're thinking, okay, it's made an attempt. It might have a two-legged correction. The first entry long. And that kind of pushes down. Technically, you have a second entry long, but this is just nothing. And it's already entering the last 10 minutes. This is like happening one minute before the close. It's hard to trust anything here because price action gets very choppy. The uh, behavior, it becomes hard to predict and unpredictable because there's I guess it's the same thing. It's hard to predict an unpredictable same thing, except, uh, not except, it's just like, it's hard to trust and see any clean setups here because it can move really quickly. So I tend to not really touch anything back here. It just kind of moves into the close. So after about, I don't know, the first, you know, three hours afterwards, this is really slow price action. Nothing really sets up that clean. So kind of how I saw the charts today. Uh, took one trade was profitable, which is nice for a change. And uh, there was a couple other setups that I thought were reasonable, and then some almost setups. So hopefully that was helpful.